carbon and its compounds so in this chapter we will study about an element which is carbon carbon is very significant to us in both its elemental form and in the combined form तो हमारी डेली लाइफ में हम जितनी भी चीज़ें या ऑब्जेक्ट्स यूज़ करते हैं या फिर कंज्यूम करते हैं उन सारी चीज़ों में से हम देखेंगे कि कौन सी चीज़ें मेटल से बनी हैं और कौन सी चीज़ें ग्लास या अदर ऑब्जेक्ट से बनी हैं सो दीज आर दी जनरल एग्जांपल्स और लिस्ट ऑफ द आइटम्स दैट वी यूज़ और कंज्यूम सिंस द मॉर्निंग एवरी डे फ्लावर वास drinking glass this pot caesar key spoons fork bowls window pane and rest watch so fork spoon key scissors and rest watch these all objects are made up of metal and drinking glass flower vase this pot these all are made up of glass or clay and other than these objects which are made up of other things are shower gel shampoo milk coffee notebook etc to jitne bhi objects humne last wale column mein likhe hain jo metal ya glass aur clay ke alawa kisi aur other material se milke bane hain usme zyada tar objects carbon compound se milke bane hain most of them are made up of compounds of carbon but how to prove it that they are made up of carbon food clothes medicines books and many of the things are made up of carbon element even all living structures are carbon based the amount of carbon present in the earth's crust and in the atmosphere is quite meager the earth's crust has only 0.02% carbon in the form of minerals and the atmosphere has 0.03% of carbon dioxide in spite of this small amount of carbon available in nature the importance of carbon seems to be immense so in this chapter we will know about the properties of carbon which make carbon so important to us to sabse pehle hum dekhenge carbon ka structure aur unki bonding that means they are present in less quantity bonding in carbon the covalent bond so we have already studied about the properties of ionic compounds so ionic compounds have high melting and boiling points and conduct electricity in solution or in the molten state so now let's study the properties of some carbon compounds so most carbon compounds especially organic compounds are poor conductors of electricity but why they are poor conductors This is because the bonding in these compounds does not result in the formation of ions. Ionic compounds are good conductors because they produce ions when they are dissolved in the solution. 
carbon compounds have low melting and boiling points as compared to ionic compounds this is because the forces of attraction between the molecules are not very strong so very less amount of heat can break the bond between the molecules so molecules of carbon compounds become volatile for example chloroform it is highly volatile it has low melting and boiling points and ethanol also ethanol is an alcohol ethanol is present in the liquid form but it can be vaporized very easily upon heating methane is gas and acetic acid is liquid no organic compound is gas organic compounds are mainly solid carbon compounds can be exist in the solid liquid and gaseous all the forms the weak intermolecular forces of attraction result in low melting and boiling points for carbon compounds compared to ionic compounds in ionic compounds strong electrostatic forces exist between positively and negatively charged ions leading to higher melting and boiling points since carbon compounds do not form ions and have weak intermolecular forces they do not readily conduct electricity in carbon compounds the lack of ions and the absence of mobile electrons hinder their ability to conduct electricity now let's have a look at the electronic configuration of carbon so what is the atomic number of carbon yes it is 6 so what is the distribution of electrons in various shells of carbon to chalo carbon atom ki structure dekhne ke liye chalte hain carbon se bane compound ke andar so this compound is made up of carbon only ab chalte hain carbon ke molecule mein aur molecule se chalte hain atom ke andar now you can see here so many carbon atoms it has total 6 electrons and these electrons are fitted in two shells the innermost shell is known as k shell and k shell has two electrons the outer shell is known as l shell and this l shell has four electrons we know that the reactivity of elements is explained as their tendency to attain a completely filled outer shell that is attain noble gas configuration so to attain the noble gas configuration carbon requires four additional electrons so the elements forming ionic compounds achieve this by either gaining or losing electrons from the outermost shell in the case of carbon it has four electrons in its outermost shell and needs to gain or lose four electrons to attain noble gas configuration तो क्या होता है अगर ये चार इलेक्ट्रॉन लूज करे या फिर गेन करेगा तो गेन करेगा तो इसका मतलब कार्बन एनायन फॉर्म करेगा और अगर लूज करेगा इसका मतलब है कार्बन कैटायन फॉर्म करेगा सो कार्बन कुड गेन फोर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फॉर्मिंग इन सी फोर माइनस एनायन इट हैज सिक्स protons and 10 electrons but it would be difficult for the nucleus with 6 protons to hold on to 10 electrons that is 4 extra electrons so it becomes unstable what happens when it becomes cation it could lose 4 electrons forming c4 plus cation now it has 6 protons and 2 electrons 
but it would require a large amount of energy to remove four electrons leaving behind a carbon cation with six protons in its nucleus holding on to just two electrons so carbon neither lose four electrons nor gain four electrons so it overcomes this problem by sharing its valence electrons with other atoms of carbon or with atoms of other elements the shared electrons belong to the outermost shell of both the atoms and led to both atoms attaining a noble gas configuration so sharing of electrons between two atoms results in the formation of new bonds between atoms and that bond is known as covalent bond this increase the stability of molecule so the simplest molecule formed because of the covalent bond is hydrogen the atomic number of hydrogen is 1 it has only one electron in its k shell so it requires one more electron to fill the k shell so two hydrogen atoms share their electrons to form a molecule of hydrogen like this so hence h2 is formed this allows each hydrogen atom to attain the electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas that is helium which has two electrons in its k shell so h2 molecules attain the configuration of helium so a single covalent bond has two shared electrons and this is indicated by a solid line between two atoms let's go for one more example of covalent bond So the atomic number of chlorine is 17. Chlorine forms a diatomic molecule Cl2. So how many electrons it needs to be shared? Iske outermost shell mein kitne electrons hain? So its outermost shell has 7 electrons. So chlorine shares one electron with the other chlorine atom. and forms a covalent bond between them and like this cl2 molecule is formed in the case of oxygen oxygen has 6 electrons in its l shell because the atomic number of oxygen is 8 and it requires two more electrons to complete its octet so each atom of oxygen shares two electrons with another atom of oxygen to give the structure of o2 molecule so the two electrons contributed by each oxygen atom give rise to two shared pairs of electrons this is said to constitute a double bond between the two atoms what happens if an oxygen atom does not get any other oxygen atom so in this case oxygen can combine with two hydrogen atoms so oxygen shares one electron with one hydrogen atom and second electron with second hydrogen atom so it forms single bond with one hydrogen and another single bond with other hydrogen so it forms two bonds with two hydrogen so hence the molecule of water is formed that is h2o just like oxygen molecule nitrogen molecule is formed nitrogen has the atomic number 
so it has two electrons in k shell and five electrons in l shell so it requires three more additional electrons in l shell so it forms three covalent bonds with other nitrogen atoms by this way n2 molecule is formed in order to attain an octet each nitrogen atom in a molecule of nitrogen contributes three electrons giving rise to three shared pairs of electrons this is said to constitute a triple bond between the two atoms so likewise if a nitrogen atom does not get other nitrogen it makes the covalent bond with other atoms of other elements like hydrogen so nitrogen shares three electrons with different different atoms of hydrogen molecules so it interacts with three hydrogens and forms three covalent bond but all three covalent bond are single they are not the double or triple bonds like the case of n2 now take an example of a compound of carbon that is methane methane is widely used as a fuel and is a major component of biogas and compressed natural gas it is also one of the simplest compounds formed by carbon we write methane as ch4 hydrogen as we all know has a valency of 1 carbon is tetravalent because it has four valence electrons in order to achieve noble gas configuration carbon shares these electrons with four atoms of hydrogen such bonds which are formed by the sharing of an electron pair between two atoms are known as covalent bonds covalently bonded molecules are seen to have strong bonds within the molecule but intermolecular forces are weak this gives rise to the low melting and boiling points of these compounds since the electrons are shared between atoms and no charged particles are formed such covalent compounds are generally poor conductors of electricity